All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be episode two of uh, Restoring a Ford Super Duty. So, in my last video, I don't know if you guys saw, we were attempting to sandblast these bad boys so we can paint them. Um, but obviously, it's, it's this fake chrome-plated stuff. So, uh, going to need to get a little heavier than just uh, sandblasting. And there's some... Still some spots that the sandblaster couldn't get out that's rusted. So my main goal today is to get these bad boys done and painted. So with that, in order to get those stripped, I don't have like a stripper tank or anything like that. So what I picked up, and see if this will work. It's like a paint remover pretty much, but this isn't paint. So we'll see how well this stuff works if it can get it down to bare metal. It says it's supposed to strip down to bare metal in like 45 minutes. So the plan with this is I'm gonna throw it on a rag. So basically I'm gonna use that uh, paint remover. I'm gonna throw this on a piece of cardboard, take the bolts out, and uh, see if we can't let it sit on here and eat away at some of this. Rinse it off and then give it a sandblast. Hopefully it'll be soft enough to get rid of. So let's give it a shot. So like I said, we're just gonna take these bolts out. These actually came out pretty okay in the sandblaster. There's a few pieces on them that need to be, you know, finished up, but. We're not going for 100% perfection on this build necessarily. I mean, I want it to be nice, but I also don't want to spend eight months trying to get everything perfect get everything perfect especially with a you know normal everyday life like every single one of you guys so here is the plan we're gonna see if this stuff works feel free to let me know down in the comments if you guys have tried other things that work really well for these chrome plated pieces I've never used stuff like this before so Let's see, just following the directions to see if it'll work. I don't know if it'll work for this type of stuff, but we're going to find out together. Let it sit for about 45 minutes, that's what it says on the bottle, and then uh, see if anything happens, and then we'll give it a rinse and hopefully sandblast this puppy. Alright, so I had another issue that I was dealing with when sandblasting, and it was my gun is pushing out a lot of air through the trigger, so it's not sealing so a lot of my compressor power is being pushed out through the trigger piece so I did pick up another gun and hopefully this one seals better and uh, so I'm gonna take out this old gun change out the fittings make sure everything's gonna work and then we're gonna throw on a ceramic tip and let's hope we have better blasting power what do you say I think that's probably that's probably the better bet to get a new gun because given that this is not like the highest of quality replacement <laughs> either, um, it might be a little better than Harbor Freight, you know? We'll see how all those fittings work together and then hopefully we have a way more powerful sandblaster. Okay, so here's the old gun. And I don't know if you can hear, but down in the bottom, this little pin piece that holds back the air pressure is super wobbly. You can't really hear it, but you can see it and feel it. Um, so when you pull the trigger back, this guy is already releasing air, so when you let go, you're not getting as much pressure out of the tip as you would with, a, I guess, a better gun. But here's the new gun. Pretty identical. I'm going to take these bad boys out, put some thread tape on them just to protect these threads and hopefully seal out any other problems. But this guy, this trigger piece back here, is a lot smoother and also does not have any play in it. So hopefully that was our problem. I think this is going to be a better solution. I'm going to adjust this tip out for a little more uh, pinpoint tip for glass bead. And then uh, we'll see if this guy works any better. 
All right, so that new gun that I just installed did fix my problem of an air leak. When you open the door before, you could hear it just leaking out of the trigger, and it was making my air pressure go down way faster than it needed to. So this gun does have a lot more zip to it now. That paint thinner didn't really work too well. Maybe I just didn't apply it correctly. Let me know down in the comments if you know, I guess, a different way or a better product even to get like chrome plated stuff off. Because if I don't do the amp research steps and all that, I'm probably going to do my running boards and try and get my running boards like stripped so I can get them painted or powder coated or something, you know. So, uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments if there's maybe a different product or something. You know, I'm still new to this, so I'm not really sure. I'm learning along the same with you guys. So, um, I do have the tow hooks in the sandblaster now. So, I'm going to put the, try and get as much off as I can, and then we're going to give them a base clear once they're nice and clean. Let's see what this new gun has to offer for spraying powder. Well, I have them sandblasted to the best of my ability for sure. Um, still a couple little shiny spots. I think I'm going to hit them with some Scotch-Brite, get those uh, all cleaned up. And then I'm going to tape off the threads. And then we're going to hang them and, well, maybe hang them if we can find a spot. And then we'll do some, uh, some painting. So I'm going to mask the threads off real quick. I got them all sandblasted, obviously, as you saw. And I got them hung up. And I laid down two coats of base and two coats of clear with a 15-minute flash time in between it all. You can see them right there. Hanging out, drying up. And when those guys are ready to go, which will be tomorrow, I'm going to get a uh, razor blade, get some of the runs out, and then I'll get uh, some of my, my polish and all that and get it all nice and cleaned up and shiny. And then once that's complete, then we'll be able to install it on the truck. So I'm going to let those dry for a few hours, and then uh, we'll hop back into it. Okay, so it was just a split second for you guys, but I waited overnight, and I got these bad boys coated up ready to go back on the truck so this is how they look afterwards they were that chrome plated and with the help of the sandblaster everything looks like it's a nice thick coat and it actually seeped into the metal which is good so there shouldn't be any sort of chipping or anything like that unless we have somebody tug on it pretty much to pull me out of anywhere but there is well being a youtuber obviously I want to uh, not hide anything. I, I want to show you guys my mistakes. So I did get a little overzealous on the clear. And uh, once that fully cures up and dries, I'm going to give that a nice wet sand. And then uh, I will polish these up so it'll be nice and nice and clean. But let's go ahead and put these on the truck. And then I have uh, one more thing I want to do within this episode. So let's go install these bad boys. So. These bad boys are a, a 15 millimeter bolt and they're kind of cramped up in there. So if you do have an angle uh, ratchet, I would recommend using it, but you don't have to. I got them out without it. I do recommend using one of these guys. Um, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Just getting it snugged up in there and making sure nothing's just hand tight. But that's the first one done, and uh, it looks way better than chrome. So let's go ahead and knock out this guy. So, like I said, those look pretty dang good. Way better than the chrome, but I was saying, I did go just a little overzealous on the clear here. See, I got a nice run right there. Um, since it's on the top and it's pretty easy to get to, I will be able to wet sand and polish that, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, so I'm going to let the truck drip dry for, I don't know, probably about 10 more minutes or so, and then I'll pull the truck into the garage, and then we have one more thing we want to accomplish in this episode. So, let's do it. Okay. So here's the next step in this process. We're going to be using the Cerakote glass coat. Cerakote makes a lot of good products. Um, they make a trim coat. It makes all your black plastics look like it's brand new. Um, Cerakote does make a spray, like a metal coating spray, that is so thin that you don't even have to mask off threads. 
Um, you know, they make some really good products and they're one of the leading companies in ceramic coating technology. So what we're going to be doing today is the windshield and all the windows minus the back window uh, because I want to take this canopy off here and then we'll do the back window when that happens. But this has everything you need to do the uh, glass coating. So it does come with your actual ceramic glass coating right here. Um, it comes with a microfiber to wipe off everything and it does come with gloves so if you don't have gloves it's a nice all-in-one package and then it does have your glass um, cleaner so your glass cleaner wipes so I'm gonna use one one cleaner for the whole windshield and then I will use one cleaner for all four of the windows so one of the things with ceramic glass coating right the um, the technology in this also like embeds into scratches within the window and so there is it is increasing your visibility and also one of your main benefits that you're getting is you're getting water repellent so it'll repel all of your rain it'll just beat up and go away uh, so it'll make your windshield wipers last longer uh, it really it's, it has a huge effect this is applicable for under 15 minutes it goes really quick really easy I'm not going to show you the step by step but Obviously, step one is going to be clean your windshield, scrub it up, make it really nice. Make sure you wear gloves. This stuff is nasty. Um, so there's step one, and then step two. <laughs> so once your once your glass is clean, then you spray this on there. You let it sit for like two minutes or so, and then you buff it off. It's super simple. And if you do have any questions about how to do it, gives you step-by-step -step instructions. About 10 minutes later, um, this stuff works wonders. All the glass is crystal clear. It looks phenomenal. If you guys want to pick up some of this, I'll put it, uh, a link to it down in the description box below. These guys are absolutely amazing. Their customer service is awesome too. Um, they like to support car enthusiasts. And from Cerakote's site and or the Prismatic Powder site, you can go ahead and get the best powder coat on planet Earth and or the best ceramic products on planet Earth for vehicles. Um, that's it. That's going to be a wrap for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the content. I really hope to see you guys in the next episode in episode three of Restoring the Super Duty behind me. This is going to be a pretty fun journey, and I really hope you guys can stick around and come along with me for this. This is going to be super fun time. But uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up right here. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys for all the support, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.